What's going on guys? So we are out here at the Black Series loaner. This is a 90 day loaner that they sent me so I could evaluate it and see what it's all about. These things are super, super cool. But today we're gonna try to figure out how to hitch it up for the first time. So my sponsors over at eTrailer actually sell this product. It's a Reese drop hitch. This is a class five hitch and it's rated to 14,000 pounds. You need to get the larger one for this setup to work. They basically provide you this from Black Series and this clamps on to the actual ball mount that you would have. So you wanna get a ball mount without a ball on it. And this works with their really cool poly block down there. So you have that articulation that you might need in an off-road environment. But I'm gonna take my B&W hitch off, throw this one in place and get it pinned up and uh, see how it works. I think the big challenge a lot of people perceive is hitching it up is gonna be more difficult because you have to align this perfectly, which is kind of true, but let's see how it plays out. Okay, so we have the hitch in place with the black series portion attached to the top of it. And again, you wanna make sure you get the higher class rating right here. So you have this wider piece to fit right in this groove. Bolts in place right here. I can either raise the trailer up or I could drop my airbag slightly, but you know, it'd actually make a lot more sense to raise the trailer up a little bit. So that's what I'm gonna do. And then I'll see if I can back up to it. And what's kind of cool is that they include an electric tongue jack on this specific one. So you have both this one that swings out of the way. And if you wanna use the electric tongue jack, you can also use it. But since the manual tongue jack is down already, I'm gonna go ahead and wind it up and shouldn't take too much effort to get it high enough here. Actually, that looks like it's pretty close. Okay, so I don't know if this is gonna line up perfectly when I back up to it. It's pretty close, but we shall see. And it has an emergency brake, which is kind of cool, or a parking brake. So you pull this up and it keeps the tires from turning and uh, keeps it kind of stationary. So let's back up to it and see what happens. Okay, I'd say that's pretty close, but it's not perfectly lined up. And I guess the first thing I'm gonna need to do here is take the pin out of that, take the spring off, and then maybe set that right there so whenever I line up, it'll just drop into place. So let's see if that works. There we go, got it in. Yeah, I think the spring goes on the bottom. It might actually go up here on the top. So I think it might go on the top actually, so it puts pressure on it. Okay, so I pulled the pin out, put the spring on, and got the pin back in, or at least the spring back in in this pin, and then I'm just gonna throw this pin underneath it right here. There we go. Just have to connect my trailer brakes. brakes on so this uses shackles instead of hooks so I gotta see if these shackles fit right here it's kind of creative because sometimes the chains don't or the hooks don't so let's see if the shackles fit around the mounts very heavy-duty chains yep I need two hands so I'm gonna go ahead and put the chains on okay so we got the chains hooked up those are massive chains we have them hooked up with the shackles to the chain hook loops. 
we have this in place and this is tightened down really well. Pins in place with the spring right there. Just got to lower the back down and see how much it makes the truck squat to get the tire chocks out. But let's go ahead and remove the e-brake because that's not going to be needed right now. All right. Okay, so we're hitched up. Let's lower this jack out of the way. Well, that really didn't drop much. All right, so we got that up. Let's pull this out of the way and flip it up. Okay, so all you essentially do is pull this handle, flip it up out of the way. The only thing this may do is cause a bit of interference if you're turning really sharp where the back bumper may make contact with that, but you just gotta keep an eye on it. I think we're ready to go. I already checked the lights. This thing is absolutely filthy, but absolutely gorgeous at the same time. It's almost the cleanliness that you would expect to come back whenever you take this thing out because of how it's ready to go off-roading. What's also kind of interesting is the folks over at Black Series said, you know what, if you go and get it washed, we'll reimburse you to have it pressure sprayed. That's probably the only manufacturer I've ever heard of that has used the term pressure spray and washing an RV in one sentence, which is kind of crazy. Anyways, we're gonna go and take this around to the front area and try to get this thing rinsed down a little bit so it looks a little bit more presentable. Okay, so this is how it looks, hooked up to the F450. It really didn't cause the truck to squat at all. I really didn't expect it to. You know, it's roughly 6,100 pounds dry, has a 10,000 pound GBWR. But you gotta admit, that looks pretty amazing. I mean, if you wanted to get the baddest looking RV on the market, towable, bumper pull, that's it right there. I don't know anything else that looks as nice. You know, I'm a fan of Airstreams and kind of their classic look, but there's nothing that competes with the look of a Black Series, especially behind a tow vehicle. It's funny, the uh, hotshot crew that delivered it was saying that every red light, people are staring it down. So this is really cool. And we want to take it out. The only problem is I didn't get the license plate with it. So I need a tag that they're going to send me and I'll be able to be legal towing it. Because right now I don't have a tag. But check that out. Just imagine being behind this thing in traffic. I mean, that just looks super, super cool. All right, guys. Well, we're going to go take this thing to get it rinsed down. Okay, so we are backed up to the little dump station slash rinse down area. Let's go ahead and get this thing cleaned off a little bit because it is filthy.
you have it. This is what it looks like when it doesn't have an inch thick layer of dust on it. Very cool, which is the opposite of today's weather. It's insanely hot today and I'm gonna tell you, you need to hydrate well on days like this because I certainly didn't and I'm feeling it. I wish we could take it out, but unfortunately we can't because we don't have the tags. Once those come in or once they send me a copy of them, I'll be able to put a temporary tag on the back of this thing and take it camping. But yeah, it looks really good. What are your thoughts? Now, so far, the only negative I can tell you about this setup is this hitch assembly. It's not that it's bad. It's going to be great if you're going to be off-roading and you need that type of articulation. The challenge is if you're not going to be off-roading and you just want this as a cool camper, the hitching process takes longer because you have to put a whole new ball mount in if you aren't using this trailer, like if you have other trailers. And this piece, you really can't just leave it in place because it extends off the back about 14 inches, so you don't want it just hanging there. And you'll definitely hurt your leg or your knee walking by this thing if you smack it on there. But what I would like to see is maybe the option to get it with a pintle or a traditional two and five sixteenths inch coupler on the back. That way you don't always have to worry about this block. This is a really cool idea, really cool concept, but I'd venture to say about half the people that buy these would prefer the standard coupler because it's a lot easier to get set up. If you left this on your truck, it's not that difficult, but it still takes a level of precision backing it up. And if you don't have a backup camera, it's certainly gonna be a bit more challenging than trying to couple your typical ball coupler. But that's really it. I mean, that's the only thing. Now I understand why they use this. It's purpose built, right? It's designed for that extreme articulation and off-roading. I just kind of wish that they had the option for a regular coupler if you didn't think you're gonna take it through those types of conditions. But that's really my only main gripe for this thing. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.